Canada, a significant player in the worldwide hydropower industry, has long depended on different kinds of projects to support its objective for renewable energy. Here, we have Site C, which is expected to produce enough renewable energy to power 450,000 homes. The project is being criticized by several organizations, including political officials, journalists, indigenous people, and environmental activists. Its budget has nearly doubled, reaching an astounding $12 billion. The developers are committed to finishing Site C, despite the numerous obstacles and continuous discussions. For what reason is that the case? Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about Canada's $12 billion mega dam. So buckle up and make sure to stay to the end to learn everything that you need to know about it. Without further ado, let's get right into it. By retaining water that has potential energy, the Site C dam functions like a massive battery. This water, when released, passes through turbines and generates kinetic energy, which drives generators to provide electricity. Although it seems straightforward, the truth is much more nuanced. Providing 60% electricity in Canada, hydropower is a major component of the nation's energy grid. In actuality, Site C is just one of 475 hydroelectric stations that are currently in operation in Canada, the third largest hydropower producer in the world. Canada is a good fit for hydropower because of its plentiful water resources, the technology's dependability and efficiency, and the renewable and reasonably priced electricity it produces. Site C's infrastructure isn't very innovative, but its scope is nevertheless astounding. The dam, which would hold 16 million cubic meters of earth-filled material, is anticipated to be 1,000 meters across, 500 meters wide, and 60 meters tall. While most of this material was obtained locally, some had to be moved via a conveyor belt system spanning 5 kilometers. The dam is built to withstand earthquakes that happen once every 10,000 years, which scientists believe British Columbia is overdue for. The reservoir behind the dam will fill over 4 months after the infrastructure is finished, drowning 83 kilometers of the Peace River and creating a reservoir that is larger than half of Washington, D.C. After the dam is put into service, 5,100 gigawatt hours of energy will be produced annually, adding 8% to British Columbia's total supply. The energy produced will be renewable, on demand, and reasonably priced, the creators claim. So why is there so much hostility to Site C when it presents such a promising renewable energy solution? Well, we must travel back in time to comprehend this. There has always been potential for hydropower on the Peace River, and Site C is not the first dam to be constructed there. Completing in 1967, the W.A.C. Bennett Dam marked the beginning of a sequence of hydroelectric ventures along the Peace River. It produced the seventh largest reservoir in the world in terms of volume, the Williston Reservoir. In 1980, a second dam was built, the Peace Canyon Dam, which created the considerably smaller Dinosaur Reservoir. Engineers have increased efficiency by repurposing water for power generation as it flows downstream by constructing multiple dams on the same river. But out of all these initiatives, Site C is the most controversial. Ever since its inception in the 1950s, the provincial administration has consistently turned it down. The government wasn't persuaded until 2014, despite predictions from BC Hydro, the publicly owned company responsible for the project, that an annual increase in electricity consumption would be 2%. By then, the economy had boomed and the population had tripled, and British Columbia was determined to meet its net zero carbon targets. Considering all of this, Site C was eventually approved by the government. With a $6.4 billion initial budget, construction got underway in 2015, but not without resistance. A review of the project, headed by public servant Harry Swain, who expressed strong disapproval of BC Hydro's predictions, was mandated by the government. He thought the province could get by without building another dam by using alternative, renewable energy sources to meet its energy needs. Opposition leader John Horgan was among the politicians who opposed Site C and pledged to carry out a thorough investigation if elected. The dam was two years into its construction and already two years over budget and behind schedule when Horgan won the election in 2017. As promised, Horgan requested an assessment of the project, which found that it would cease to be economically feasible if the dam's existing budget was exceeded. The evaluators noted that it was challenging to forecast the future energy requirements. Hogan chose to move forward with the project despite the report's conclusions, citing the financial implications of stopping it. Even though it wasn't his ideal project, he said it had to be finished. As of right now, Site C is almost finished, but not without more challenges. 
The project's budget, schedule, and scale prompted serious concerns, according to a BC Hydrostatus report from 2020. The foundation's structural problems were also mentioned as major obstacles. Shale, sometimes known as soft rock, provides the foundation for the dam, but it is pliable. Although there have been 16 dams constructed on comparable terrain throughout the world, this one needs a solid foundation because the area is prone to landslides. To solve this, BC Hydro chose to build a distinctive L-shaped dam with a concrete buttress underneath it for further stability. Important structural elements, including the generation station and spillway, were constructed on roller compacted concrete to provide a stronger foundation that resists seismic activity. While this technique has helped reduce some of the dangers, the project's planned $12 billion cost has increased due to construction delays brought on by geological difficulties and of course the COVID-19 epidemic. In addition to the financial and practical difficulties, Site C has sparked discussions about environmental preservation and indigenous land rights. The site where the dam is being built is known as Treaty 8 and is covered by a historic 1899 agreement. 39 First Nations groups now have the legal right to hunt, fish, and trap on their traditional territories thanks to this treaty. Nearly 10,000 hectare acres of this land will be destroyed by flooding the Peace River to build the Site C Reservoir, violating these indigenous groups' fundamental rights. John Horgan had advocated for Treaty 8 even before his election, and in 2019, the UN demanded that work on Site C be put on hold until a settlement with the impacted First Nations was achieved. A solution was eventually reached, even though the building went on, but many considered this to be a breach of indigenous sovereignty. There have been a lot of criticisms directed at Site C's environmental effects. There is a wide variety of animals in the Peace River Valley, and the dam poses a threat to many of these species' extinction. The World Wildlife Fund, or WWF for short, has denounced the proposal, citing irreparable harm to the ecology and 63 species are reportedly at risk. Although many opponents contend that the damage has already been done, BC Hydro has pledged to restore the wetlands that the dam devastated. Rebuilding ecosystems is a gradual process after all. The project supporters contend that despite its difficulties, Site C will yield substantial advantages in terms of economic expansion and renewable energy. Above all, the dam will provide clean energy for more than a century. Its annual output is anticipated to be sufficient to power 1.7 million electric automobiles. One of the cleanest energy sources is hydropower, and according to BC Hydro, Site C will emit fewer carbon gases per gigawatt hour than other renewable energy sources like solar and wind. Another benefit of hydroelectric dams is that their energy output may be controlled. Operators can alter production to meet peak demand and decrease it for off-peak times by regulating the head gate, which regulates water flow. Because of its adaptability, hydropower is more efficient than solar and wind power, which are dependent on erratic natural forces. Furthermore, with only 5% of the reservoir size, Site C, the third dam on the Peace River, is 35% more productive than the considerably bigger WAC Bennett Dam due to its ability to reuse water from upstream. British Columbia is expected to gain significantly, economically speaking, from the construction of Site C. According to BC Hydro, the project will boost the province's economy by $3.2 billion and the regional GDP by $130 million. As of February of 2020, hundreds of jobs have been created during the building phase alone, employing over 2,700 people. 33,000 person years of employment are anticipated to result from the project overall, both directly and indirectly. Furthermore, the government has already spent billions building the dam, so stopping work now would result in a significant loss of funds. To lessen the project's negative effects, BC Hydro has also established a $13 million Indigenous Traditional Use Fund to protect resources and land for customary uses. The potential role of Site C in bolstering British Columbia's LNG industry is one of the more contentious parts of the project. Natural gas from Dawson Creek, which is only 63 kilometers from Site C, will be transported by the 670 kilometer coastal gas link pipeline to the west coast, where it will be converted into LNG for export. There are conjectures that the purpose of building Site C is to supply electricity for these energy demanding processes of gas extraction and processing. LNG exports have the potential to bring in $23 billion for the province, plus an additional $24 billion from the private sector investment. Asia is a ready market for Canadian LNG, which the government says will aid in the move of those nations away from coal. Opponents contend that the project is being greenwashed to justify the use of renewable energy to prop up the fossil fuel sector. And with that, we've come to an end. What do you think about this astonishing dam? 
let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to our channel before you leave. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all with another interesting video very soon. But do you want to know some of the 5 biggest stadiums under construction right now? Well, check out this video to find out more.